Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Jeff Teague in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is Auto Jeff Reviews and I'm gonna review this little bad boy right here. It's the 2021 Mazda CX-30 Turbo. If you're new to my channel, I like to do reviews for regular people like you and me. I wanna help you with your research and learn more about the cars that you've already purchased. And I'll tell you, with this CX-30 here, I did not wanna like it at first and it didn't work. I loved it and I'm gonna tell you why. First, let's get a lay of the land. This is the Premium Plus all-wheel drive. It even has an off-roading button in the inside. I'll show you that in a minute. Look at this color here. This is brilliant. I saw it when it was first delivered to me. Wow, talk about making a statement. It has four words, soul, red, crystal metallic. And when an auto manufacturer gives a paint color, four words, they mean business. We're gonna go section by section, but I do want you to get a full 360. Pretend you're at an auto show. And this is coming around on the revolving turntable. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2021 CX-30 Turbo in soul red crystal metallic. So you're getting a baseline, a feel for what's going on here. Let's break it down. First of all, the front end. To me, it mixes in several different types of, we'll call it architectural design here if I'm an artist. And I see it's got LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, but it's also got a mix of safety features as well, which is really cool. Lane departure warning, lane keep assist, radar cruise control with stop and go, rear cross traffic alert in the back, and then it's also got blind spot. And you can see that blind spot warning in several different places. And I'm going to point those out. Look at this three-dimensional gloss black front grille here that has a very huge bug in it. I'm so sorry, bug. It's also got a camera here, and that's gonna be for your overhead 360 degree, we'll call it bird's eye view camera, which is actually much improved versus previous generations. And I actually kind of like it. It looks half real, half cartoonish, but it shows you what you need to see. Now this one right here, we've got an eight inch ground clearance. It's lifted up so that it gives you more of a crossover SUV type feel to it. It's still got the feel of a Mazda 3, it's kind of wedged right in there between a Mazda CX-3 and a Mazda CX-5. No, it's not a CX-4, it's a CX-30. That was taken by another country. They got it first. So anyway, CX-30 here. It also has parking sensors on the front and parking sensors in the back. So you're alerted when something's coming close to you. Beep, 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 beep. Let's get on up close and personal here so we can Look at the styling here. Like I told you, this juts out here and it, to me it looks like a menacing dinosaur eye from Jurassic Park. I think that was like half dinosaur, half Chewbacca. All right, parking sensors. And then just look up close here, the chrome surround. It's really cool because it's kind of a combination of luxury meets sporty. And I do believe that CX-30 is really attempting to go luxury here, more upscale with their vehicles and we'll see as we look around, you can tell me whether they accomplish that or not. Let's look down here. This is a great place to store your car keys. So right here we've got 18 inch alloy wheels and they match the other glossy features that you see around the vehicle. We'll see that starting with our side mirror up here. Got the Mazda symbol of course. And then these particular tires are 215-55 R18. For those watching at home and just saying, what kind of tires are we talking about here? And more about styling, this thick, as other reviewers have called it, cladding. I just hate that word cladding. It sounds so awkward and clunky. But anyway, it is thick. It's thicker, but I'll tell you what, I've seen it in other reviews on lighter cars, like a white or a silver, with the red, soul red crystal metallic, yo. It actually works. It doesn't look bad at all. I don't mind it one bit. Now here's what I'm talking about. It's just thicker than you see on most vehicles. Do you notice it? Does it bother you? I'd love to get your comments and thoughts and opinions as well. We've got turn signal indicators right here, side mirrors, and they do turn down. Turn down for what? When you put it in reverse, they're gonna turn down so you can see a little bit better as you back up. Also, look at this key design. It's very interesting, and I had a hard time just kind of wrapping my mind around it at first because the buttons, are right in the thin part of the key. But it looks streamlined, high line. It's kind of cool. And then we can also use this as part of its push button start. When you want to unlock, just 
have the key in your purse or your pants or your shorts, and then you lock it with these little singular line right on over there. The fuel door, pretty easy to use. Don't have to push any buttons on the inside. It just opens. But this is really the meat and potatoes. This is the reason why we're here today, because we're looking at the Skyactiv-G Nothing but a G thing, baby. It's a turbo engine, a 2.5 liter turbo engine. And what does it do for you? Well, frankly, it gives you 227 horsepower and 310 foot pounds of torque. But wait, there's more. If you use premium gasoline, that's with 87 octane premium, it's gonna jump your figures up to 250 horsepower and 320 foot pounds of torque. So you have to kind of balance out fuel prices with performance. It's matched with a six-speed automatic transmission with sport mode, and sport mode makes it sound louder, makes it feel more high performance, and you go faster, okay? Fuel mileage, 22 in the city, 30 on the highway, combined of 25. I've driven this car probably about 500 miles this week, and I'm getting just under 28 miles a gallon. It just zipped down because I was kind of zoom, zoom, zoom in, right? All I want to do is a zoom, 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 and a poom, poom. Just shake your rump. Earlier, I alluded to the fact that I really didn't want to like this car. I thought it was on the small side. I didn't know about performance. I didn't know about power. And I didn't know whether it was going to be smooth or rough riding. But I'll tell you what, my impression changed probably from the minute I got into it. Because you'll see on the inside, it has luxurious features. It's got soft touch, leather seating. The seats are very comfortable. Now the ride, it's smooth. It's really smooth. You do not feel it shifting very much at all between zero and your top cruising speed, right? And it could get zero to 60 in less than six seconds. What I find is because of the turbo, yes, it has a kick to it. It's got that monstrous, really, for the size it is, low end torque. But then when you're about, say, 25 to 55 or so, it just gets its second wind or something like that because it just rolls. And as a matter of fact, the digital speedometer, it might be at 29 and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, it's at 34 and then it's at 39 and 42. It's kind of amazing how the, even the car knows, hey, we're gonna be jumping to light speed here, folks. So for the size that it is, it rides really nice. The handling is nice, the suspension feels very nice. It feels comfortable on city streets or on the highway as well. So hopefully that gives you some guidance for when you get ready to test drive your vehicle. Maybe this one. Let's talk about cargo capacity. This is a power lift gate. You can operate it from your key or in here. Just push the little grippy. See your backup camera here. And then we're gonna see a nice cover here. It's a hard cover. It also can affix to this right here so that way it comes up. When your hatch comes up, you can do that or you can just take it off. And then what you're gonna have is you're gonna have 20.2 cubic feet of cargo space with the seats up, all right? With the seats down, you're gonna have 45.2. So I'll lay this down gently. Now, now here we go. Oh yeah. Now we've got some versatility here, folks. It fits a Jeff. It could fit lots of luggage. I could see some golf clubs in here. It really opens up what you can do in this space. Some other things I notice, it's got some tie downs or strap downs right here so that you can bungee things down, strap them down in LED light. It's like Aretha Franklin said, who's zooming who? Take another look and tell me then, who's zooming who? No, not good, Jeff. Really bad, really, really bad. Don't judge me. This has two different exhaust pipes here. It's got backup sensors. You'll hear that throaty muscular sound in the car too. I want you to take a look at these tail lights right here and reverse lights because I'm gonna back it up for you. And I want you to see the turn signals. They blink on and then they fade out. Blink on and fade out. So if you're sitting behind this car in traffic, you might take a second glance. Let's take a look. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. I like to have fun with my reviews how we roll so I'm just gonna back it forward see I'm all about safety put on my seatbelt in the parking lot he cray cray all right so let's test this out hopefully you can see it I know it's the daytime but I do have it in the shade I'm gonna be throwing a little shade here 
fist it with our hazards too. How are we doing seeing everything? It's pretty wild, right? Talk about being unique. One of a kind, folks. For all you 70s rock fans, we're going like Led Zeppelin in through the outdoor. Let's take a look at the interior and you're gonna see probably an interior you wouldn't imagine to see. The person who delivered this car to me described the interior as minimalist modern and I know exactly what they're talking about. This is a combination of several different types of trim. We've got brown accents, gloss black, of course we got our Bose speaker system. It really rocks for the size car it is. And then we've got soft touch material all along here. It's quite classy. Again, Mazda's going luxury here, competing with some higher priced badges and trims, right? But I'll tell you what, the one knock on this one is, we know the size car it is. It doesn't have a ton of leg room. And I guess the one saving grace you have is you can adjust the front seats based on if you have a tall person or a short person, which I've done here. And I'll show you how I am. I'm five foot eight. Let's see how I fit. Climb aboard, we're expecting you, the love boat. All right, here, this is set for my settings right now. So for somebody five eight sitting there, it's going to be just fine with legroom. The headroom's a little tight. It is. You could sit here. A small person could, like a child. But there is a pretty big hump right here, as Buffalo Bill would say. And then this is with the seat a little bit further back. It's got seat pocket, which I like. Nice, comfortable seats, even on the back part. I like this. But the headroom, it's a little bit small and we're going to work around that, right? Now we're going to go again and see for this class, oftentimes you do not see in this segment rear air vents. So to me, that was a huge plus. And then these are the softest armrest you may have ever seen in a car. Pretty deep cup holders and they've got the little grips right here so that it can clamp it in there. It also has very recognizable and marked child safety latches. You could probably fit three car seats across, I'll bet. At least two car seats and a booster, I would say. All right, so let's take a look at this. You can see the 8.8 .8 inch multimedia touchscreen. It's got the backup camera set up because I want you to be able to see what's going on in front of you, to the side of you, behind you. And then remember the term minimalist modern. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. What's my impression of this one? Look at the radio. No way, look at the temperature controls. This reminds me, for some reason, I don't know why, of one of my first cars, 1977, you know, when you had the six push buttons for your radio stations, but that's not, that's just the temperature, just the climate control. But it could also look real modern, like you're in 2021. Here's where you're gonna be able to adjust all of your information and you use this knob that's actually pretty easy to figure out once you get used to it. Now I've only had this for a week, but within a week's time I've learned that it's actually quite simple to use because you have to. And when I say because you have to, I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean this touch screen right here, it's not a touch screen. It looks like it should be a touch screen, but it's a little bit too far away. See my arms really extended. I don't have the longest arms, but even from the driver's side or passenger side, you really can't get to your pieces of information that you want to adjust or switch around without being distracted. So what you're going to do is just learn to use this control knob, which again is relatively easy to use. Let's take a closer look here. Power mirrors, windows. I like that they're one touch. Just hit one touch like I'm doing now, let it go and it goes up, it goes down. Bose speakers, 12 different Bose speakers. And if you know anything about sound, Bose is one of those systems where you just know it's gonna be crystal clear. It's gonna sound really fantastic. 
Got a little pocket here. And then we've got the power back hatch, two memory seats. That was a surprise to see in a vehicle of this class. All right, I like that. And then we've also got the bird's eye view camera, parking sensors off, and then your off-roading button as well. I like the steering wheel. It feels nice, it feels sporty, it feels Mazda. It's got nice chrome outline too. And then even the turn signals, if you can see that, can we see that? See how it goes on and then it kind of fades out. It's pretty neat. Here are our paddle shifters. So if you want to pop it over into M or manual type mode, you can do that. And then you can have a more high performance type feel, feel more involved with the ride or the drive. Let's go in here. These are your controls. This will be your home screen. This is the back button, navigation, and your audio. This is how you turn the radio volume or switch channels or pick your favorites. Sport mode versus regular mode. Try it. You'll like the difference. Okay, and then we've got our push button. And then this right here, for me, this is interesting because, because I have OCD. And if anybody has OCD, you know if you've got a touch screen at home in your cars, if you push it or try to get that lint off there, and you're going to see some lint. Yeah, you will. All right. You can't do that with a touch screen, but here I can just clean and clean and clean. You try to make positives out of OCD, and this is what I get. Inside the center console, you can lift it up, and then you've got access to USB. And then your circular port as well. I like how it's broken up here with just a little compartment. It's compartmentalized and then you can move it based on what you want to do with your arm and it's soft touch too, I like that. All right, these are heated seats. And then here, this is auto hold. I do like this one because it holds you at a traffic light so you can stretch your legs. And to me, that's a big benefit. And this right here, I'll show you how the knob works just a little bit. We'll go to our home. And then we're just going to go back and forth a little bit. Turn the dial. And you'll get used to this pretty easily. So if I want to do, let's say, I'm going to go to my... Just turn the dial. Push that button. Now we're on our Sirius XM, okay? And then if I want to go to... A navigation, a quick one, I'll just pop that in. It actually works real nice. So let's do the backup camera now. I'm going to go in reverse so you can see. Just like that. And now let's go forward. Look at this. It's cool, right? You might use that when you're in a parking lot, needing to maneuver easily and safely. My impressions of the seats, they're very comfortable. They're soft, they're plush. They do feel higher end, luxury, class. And I like the power seat, it moves quickly. See that? It's very nice. Lumbar support moves woo, very quickly. The one thing I noticed is the heated steering wheel didn't seem to heat up that hot, which may be a good thing if you don't like it super warm, you just want a little bit chill, a little bit chill in a hot way or warm way. It's got heated seats and they heat up very quickly and they work real well. They get warm, loosen up those back muscles. I love this car, woo -hoo 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 -hoo! yes. I'd like to show you the window sticker here so we can learn specifications. Here's the fuel mileage I was telling you about combines for 25 and like I said I'm getting just under 28 if I baby it I can get even higher closer to 29 even so here we go really good safety rating so if you want peace of mind for your family for the size car it is excellent safety features and really good safety ratings here's that black with brown combination soul red crystal metallic let's just go with standard features here and again the horsepower and torque ratings they're listed at 87 octane. You can get higher if you go with the premium fuel. LEDs, power moonroof. It's not a panoramic, but it's power moonroof. And then feel free to stop the video if you want to so you can check out everything on your own. 
has the Mazda connected services. Here's the safety, and we're actually gonna see two different columns for safety because there's so much stuff. So let's keep going here. You can see the factory MSRP is 33.9. A little bit more than that once you get some options in. So we're gonna go back up here to engine, has four wheel disc brakes. It's that iActive all wheel drive. More interior features. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto as well. All right, so let's look at the pricing. $33.9. Then we're going to add in a cargo cover, all-weather floor mats, the paint, and then we've got the rear bumper guard. So once you get it delivered to the dealerships, it'll be just under, just under, it looks like a price is right, $35,995. You win! And now it's time for the ruling in the People's Court. Dun, dun, dun. Jeff Teague is reviewing the Mazda CX-30. Let's hear what he has to say. Well, what I have to say is this car was a lot more fun to drive than I ever expected. I enjoyed it very much. I liked how it turned with the suspension. It was soft, it was smooth. The acceleration was unbelievably fast for a car in this segment. Boy, it was great. It was so much fun and it did it in a way where it was shockingly unexpected. Whew. Remember that? It felt luxurious on the inside. I wish there was a little bit more space, both in the front and the back, but I'll tell you what, it works. So let me know what you think in the comment section. I really appreciate you guys being here, joining my car community, because I do regular people reviews. I wanna know what you think, and I want you to know what I think, because it's important for your research, and like I said, learning more about the cars, the buttons, the controls and dials after you use them. So if you want, I'll be doing lots more reviews. We're gonna be having fun along the way. That's the name of the game. No boring reviews, I hate that. So just hit subscribe to Auto Jeff Reviews. I really appreciate you all. Hit a like if you thought I did a good job and was weird enough where it deserved a unique like. All right, and I'm on Instagram at Auto Jeff Reviews. My website, autojeff.com. If you wanna send me your ideas for another video, we'll do it. A comparison video, a review. You let me know, buttons, controls, and dials. Let's get it going. Let's get it on. Thanks everybody so much. See you next time. Woo! Hoo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, baby.